Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com and today we're going to make a solid carbide saw clock and a live edge clock. You might notice that these two clocks couldn't be any more different. This is actually a real saw blade that I used here in the shop before I hit a couple of nails with it uh, that I didn't notice in the wood and then it started making confetti more than making actual cuts through the wood that we use here in the shop. The other clock here is out of solid maple and this is actually from a piece of live edge that we had here in the shop. Now you might think both clocks are very similar but they're very very different. This one here because it's metal the etching that you see that goes all the way around is completely permanent. This is actually fiber laser etching and the reason why we use the fiber laser for that is to permanently etch the surface of it. That's what we do for mining companies and machine tags using 316 stainless steel and a bunch of other uh, metal grates. Now for the live edge here, it's a completely different process. We used our CNC router to router it out and then used our fiber, or sorry, CO2 laser to laser engrave this. If we use our fiber laser on this, um, it would make it a little bit dark, but it's really the beam is just too narrow to produce a cost-effective engraving like you see here that we did with our CO2 laser. When I mention to customers uh, we can do th something out of wood, out of any species, any size, any shape, I actually mean it. And the reason for that is because we have a lot of live edge actually stocked in the shop uh, for inventory and for our customers. Now what you just saw was our CNC router, routering out the clock. This is actually a blank. And so what we do is we do this side only here and first we cut this out. And the reason for that is that's where the mechanism for the clock will go. And then after that, we use the router to cut it out. Now, I don't cut it out completely so that it becomes loose right off the bat. I throw it into the bandsaw afterwards. And the reason for that is just so it doesn't move around on me. I do have a vacuum system and I got a bunch of other stuff with a CNC router where technically I wouldn't have to do that. Uh, but just out of habit, I prefer to finish stuff up using other equipment here in the shop because it produces a better result, at least in my opinion. After cutting out roughly the shape of the live edge 
into the shape that I want. In this case here, it just happens to be round. I run it through the router. What the router does is it removes all the, all the stuff on the edge that I used to hold it down uh, with the CNC router. And it also gives it a nice profile, as you can see here. So we have a straight edge here. Let's get, get the focus working. So you have a straight edge here and a bit of a rounded curve here. So that's what we can do with the CNC router, or sorry, not the CNC router, the handheld router. And the reason for that is because we go around and give it basically any profile that we want without having to go through all the extra steps with the CNC router to create another profile and a bunch of other cuts. Of course, it's sometimes more efficient to do it that way for doing mass production, but if it's one or two units, it's just more efficient to go over it with my hand and the handheld tool then it's to go with the CNC router in this case here. The next step after that is to give it a quick sand and then do the laser engraving work. of producing a roughly similar result. In this case here it's more efficient to use our CNC router to hollow out the mechanism area and to cut out the rough outline then use the bandsaw than it was to actually just cut completely out using the CNC router, flip it around and then put all these details that you see here in the contrasting uh, smoky color uh, you know, with the CNC router bit. There are two drawbacks when do, using the CNC router when it comes to engraving for this specific application here. Now the first one is, if I use the laser behind me to produce the engraving, I get free contrast. I don't have to deal with paint filling, I don't have to deal with resin, I don't have to deal with a whole bunch of other processes that slow down production. The other drawback uh, to doing this with a CNC router is for this specific design, if you notice I got the one here and the two, everything is very, very fine. The similar design is produced just in one step using our CNC laser. Uh, there's no routing involved because the shape is already there. It's solid steel. So there's not much that could really go wrong. So the, the process for etching this is the same as etching basically all the other steel that we do here in the shop. I uh, do the design that I want on it. Everything is nice and sharp as you can see. So you get the same level of contrast and the same level of detail. Uh, with this as you would with this. This has been finished afterwards to produce a more black or darker result. And basically it's just our industrial fiber laser going over it and doing exactly the same pass as we did here with our CO2 laser. What makes it kind of interesting is we have both tubes in the same machine, which means that technically if I wanted half this clock to be metal and the other half to be wood, just for example, um, I could do that in one step in the machine rather than having to go through multiple steps otherwise.
common question that I get from people who know just a little bit about lasers is that they say that they can produce something like this here contrast wise using only a CO2 laser and that is very uh, accurate and it's true the problem is whatever they do on it is a ceramic bonding paste and it comes right off here's something I did about two years ago in my shop just to give you an example and this here was actually jet black like this here the difference is what I did with the fiber laser will stay that color uh, you got to use basically an angle grinder to remove it and at the same time you're removing the whole surface of the metal uh, to remove the uh, fiber etching well this stuff here um, after a couple months I was able to peel with my fingers and as you can see if you needed something that was fiber etched uh, let's say for a mine, mining signage or that kind of stuff or in a corrosive environment this is definitely not the way to go so if you're looking for custom clocks, custom signage, whatever, wood, plastic, metal, just contact me at cncri.com and we'll make it for you.